Chapter 1. No fee is unattainable if you are ready to put in the work. Many people dream of being financially secure but have no idea where to begin. Even when a plan is put into place, they struggle to stick to it and end up back where they started, or possibly even worse. Nobody gets rich by simply dreaming. It requires hard work and focus. Money Master explains in clear terms how you can create a plan to give you cash with minimal effort. For some, they have poor saving and investing habits, while for others, it is their low income and family responsibilities that prevent them from investing. Whatever your situation, it helps to remember that something can be done about it. Ultimately, nothing lasts forever, and you can change your life. Money Master doesn't focus completely on how to make money and splash the cash throughout your days, but talks about creating the financial picture you need to have for the life that you've always wanted. Financial security isn't about being rich. It's about being in control of your money. For anyone who has thought about investing as passive income in the past but has been confused with the whole subject, this summary will inspire you to live your best life and amass wealth in the process. Chapter 2. Your definition of money determines how you handle it. Everyone needs money to survive daily. It is a widely accepted means of exchange. The problem is, even though we use money daily, we hardly ever talk about it. Parents do not educate their kids. Spouses hardly disclose their financial information to each other. And everyone just stays away from having discussions about money. Money is necessary for our survival. And if we're going to live a happier life, we need to be ready to have open conversations about it. There is no shame in discussing money. You're only opening yourself to more opportunities. In Robin's opinion, having the right attitude toward money can be life-changing. As important as money is for your goals, it also has the power to start conflicts and misunderstandings. If you want to successfully go on your journey to financial freedom, be ready to have open conversations and be willing to control your finances carefully. Money is a good servant, but can be a dangerous master. Sir Francis Bacon the first step to gaining financial freedom is to work out what money means to you. If money is just a means of exchange for you, you might not value it as much as someone who sees it as a key to happiness. Research shows that about 77% of Americans have money problems, but conversely, around 40% of Americans have an investment plan in place. It means that some people are actually making the right decisions and gathering nest eggs for themselves. Investor and billionaire Ray Dalio explains that you can gain more knowledge about money by accepting your weaknesses and learning little things every day. The successful people you see today didn't stumble on their fortune by luck. They put in the work. Chapter 3. To create sustainable wealth, you need a surefire plan. Having a plan that secures your income for the rest of your days gives you peace of mind and encourages you to explore the things you dream of. It's more important than ever before to think about the long term because our expected lifespans are increasing all the time. Research shows that with married couples, there is now a 50% chance that one partner will live to the age of 92. When you live longer, you need to create more wealth to cover your years. The key to generating wealth so that you are not working when you're 92 is to create passive income. This means you're creating a method of income that runs itself or with very minimal input from you. Investment is the ideal way to create a passive income method for yourself. When you invest, you're allocating money to a venture with the hopes of getting a profit after a specific amount of time. However, in order to understand and master investments, or any subject at all, there are three things to bear in mind. These are the three levels that allow you to master any subject at all, investments included. An understanding of the subject or idea, also known as cognitive understanding. An emotional reaction or pull toward the subject, known as emotional mastery. Doing something about it, known as physical mastery. When you have a cognitive understanding of a subject matter, it means you've done some research and are curious. Curiosity is a good thing to have because it means you'll keep digging for answers. The second level, emotional mastery, is the pull you have toward the subject. If you have no emotional attachment, you won't care if it doesn't work out. If you do not care, you are not likely to do the required work. For anything to work, you need to do something about it. Wealth will not magically come to you. You need to work for it. You need all three levels to achieve financial freedom, but repetition is the key. By repeating your actions over and over, you'll learn more and you'll increase your chances of success. Chapter 4. The journey to financial freedom begins when you take the first step. If you do not take the first step, you'll always wonder what could have been. First, you need to determine an amount you can save regularly from your paycheck. This money you're saving can also be called your freedom fund because it is going to lead to your financial success. 
It is better to even automate this process so you're not tempted to touch the money. Consider Theodore Johnson, who worked for UPS in 1924. He didn't have the highest paying job, but he was able to save 20% of his salary every month. After a while, he invested in stocks. By the time he was 90 years old, he had made more than $70 million. The key is consistency. No matter where you start, you can amass wealth over time. Time is an essential part of investing. If you are not patient, you run the risk of falling for scams. When you save or invest over time, you gain compound interest. This interest is the profit that you gain on your investments and savings. And the more you put in, the more it increases. This is how your money works for you without you lifting a finger. Sounds like magic? No, it isn't. Chapter 5. If you do not believe in the efficacy of your financial journey, nobody will. If you want your investment and savings plan to actually work, and if you want to reach the pinnacle of your own financial freedom, you need to actually believe it's going to work. Without belief, you might as well not invest or save anything at all. Take Kurt Schilling, for instance. The baseball pitcher earned about $100 million throughout his successful career. After a while, he invested all his savings into a startup business which never succeeded. Schilling lost everything and eventually ended up in debt. In a discussion, he revealed that he never believed the investment was going to work in the first place. For your investments to be successful, you also need to have the right mindset and foster a strong belief in your future success. You need to consider the journey to financial success as a game. If you want to become a master, you need to stop thinking of labor for cash. Instead, think about how your money can work in your favor, in the way you want. With the right mindset, you can do almost anything. If you keep thinking small, you're only limiting yourself. As you apply the right mindset, you also need to do so with knowledge and care. Read important books, gain knowledge, and know the rules. Look for all the potential traps and only invest in verified businesses. Learn the rules of the game you're playing and then make sure you play better than anyone else. Albert Einstein As delightful as investing is, it is full of many landmines that can randomly explode. So if you do not understand any investment opportunity, it is better to steer clear of it. Chapter 6 It is important to note that not everyone has your best interests at heart. Frauds exist. There are many stockbrokers, a professional who buys and shares stocks on behalf of others, these days. They try to convince you to invest with them and entice you with mouth-watering deals. The truth is that brokers are running a business and are trying to make a profit for themselves. Whether your stocks make a profit or not, they get their commission. If an investment seems too good to be true, it is most likely too good to be true. Avoid it. If someone tries to convince you to invest a huge amount of funds in a venture you are not sure about, do not hesitate to decline. With the internet now, things are easier to do. You can do your research and even use trusted investment apps. As you invest, your aim should be to achieve critical mass. This refers to a safe investment that can cover your daily expenses, retirement, and other needs. To achieve this, you go through three phases, accumulation, the view from the top, and decumulation. The accumulation phase is when you're putting a little cash aside from your salary every month, accumulating enough to invest. You're then investing smartly and wisely in the right areas, listening to advice from those who you can trust. After that, you hit your peak, the view from the top. At this point, you can relax a little, enjoy yourself, and spend time with your loved ones. Everyone's hope is that this stage lasts a long time, but if you make a mistake, it can set you back a few steps. After a while, you get to the decumulation stage. In this stage, you spend the money you've managed to amass over the years, and you don't have to worry. Since you've made smart decisions in the accumulation phase, you're fine. Did you know? Investment brokers are paid on a commission basis. Their income can range from $30,000 up to as much as $118,000 per year on average. Chapter 7. Choose what you want and then work for it without fail. How much do you think you need to be completely financially secure and free? Be realistic. You might be tempted to come up with a crazy number in the millions, but not every investment is going to be a major success. For you to be happy, you need to come up with a number that suits you and your needs and then you need to make it achievable. Identify a realistic amount you need to be financially secure, and then work toward it. Robbins often talks about this during his TED Talks and seminars, asking the audience how much they think they need to fund their dreams. Typically, people stand up and give wild amounts, but most don't actually know. It takes time and a little research to work out how much you're actually going to need to be secure, paying off any debts you have, and paying for things like your house and car. Work it out and come up with a number that suits you. When you look at the number you chose, it might seem wildly unachievable, but by making shrewd investments and working with the compound interest you receive, 
that number will seem much more realistic. However, do make sure that the number you come up with is personalized to you and your situation, and that you're not placing too much importance on significance. By doing this, you're simply competing for attention or comparing yourself to others. This is your journey, not theirs. Fulfillment comes from personalizing your dreams and aims. The bottom line is that you cannot reach your overall financial goals if you have no idea how much you're going to need to reach the plateau point where you can enjoy the view. From there, you work slowly and methodically to make definite progress. Chapter 8. There's no rush when it comes to investing. And always remember that variety is the spice of life. The more investment options you have, the better you'll sleep at night. It is impossible to predict the outcome of all your investments, so it is more beneficial to spread them across different industries. Investments usually do not have fixed results. Be sure to diversify and don't invest all your cash in one area. Diversifying your investments helps to protect you from those surprise downturns in the market. With hard work, anyone can earn a lot of money, but you stay wealthy by understanding asset allocation. This means where you place your money and how you arrange it. By placing all your cash in one investment, you have a huge amount of risk which could turn around in a very unpleasant way. David Swenson, an expert investor, explains that there are three most important elements for successful investing. Selecting safe investments, example, security selection. Timing your investments, asset allocation. The way you divide your investments depends upon your overall goals and how much tolerance you have to risk. But diversity is key. Also, it doesn't hurt to seek financial help from an expert before choosing to invest in any asset class. Chapter 9. The goal of all your investments should be financial security. To give you the comfort blanket of a steady income for the rest of your days, you need to invest in a way that limits the number of losses you might suffer, but also increase the gains you will receive. This can be difficult because nobody knows what is going to happen in life. Our experiences change us and shape the way we see the world and the way we make decisions. For instance, if you were born during the Great Depression, you would have lived through a hard time financially and economically. As a result, your spending and investment decisions are likely to be much more hard thought and careful. However, if you're a millennial, you were born during a time of affluence, and that means you might be slightly less careful or shrewd with your investments. For your portfolio to get the best out of the various investment opportunities out there, you should consider this. Stocks should make up 30% of your investments because it is high risk. Your portfolio should have 15% government bonds that are medium term. To balance risk, invest 40% of your portfolio in long-term government bonds. Gold can have 7.5% of your investments. Then you can invest 7.5% in other commodities, such as agriculture or livestock farming. You should always review your investments no matter how airtight your portfolio is. When you make some profit, sell a percentage off and put some money back in. You should conduct an investment review every year to check that your investments are performing well and to identify whether you need to make any changes. Conclusion There's no amount of wealth that is impossible to make. The more you invest wisely, the better your chances of getting a greater reward. First, you need to assess what type of investor you are. Read books, listen to podcasts, and seek professional financial advice. You'll be able to make better choices this way. Financial freedom is peace of mind and happiness, and it comes from hard work and the determination to succeed. The first thing you need to do is start. Once you conquer fear and begin investing wisely, there will be no stopping you. Making more money is a game and only those who know the rules end up winning. Try to ignore trends and focus on building sustainable wealth instead. Chances are, before something becomes a trend, smart investors already made a profit off it. You can join an investment group or share your ideas with friends and family so they can hold you accountable. Most importantly, believe in yourself, even though things do not look to be going well. No one else will anyway, so it is best to put all your bets on yourself. You can do it. You can be financially free. All you need to do is try. Try this. Work out the amount you really need to become financially secure. Then, come up with a percentage you can afford to save from your monthly salary. You should also find out what money is to you. Is it a way to afford all the things you want? Or is it a feeling of being secure and safe?